uh, good afternoon students and welcome to this new session of teleconferencing. Uh, last session we had covered for you uh, aberrations of the eye and visual acuity. Today we are going to cover very important topics from your course that is optometry practice uh, that is all the t uh, anti segment examination and all the important eye examinations. And to cover these topics we have with us uh, Mr. Prem Kumar Singh. Hello sir. Uh, he is the senior faculty uh, optometrist uh, from, he is the senior faculty optometrist from Sharaf and he will be covering these topics for you. Uh, sir, see, sir, we can begin sir. Yes, hello sir. Thank you Amin. Good evening everybody. Today's session uh, I am going to divide into three parts. The first presentation I will be talking about uh, the basic methods of eye examination and which will be followed by the anti-segment examination that is a detailed slit lamp examination how with the help of slit lamp we can examine the anti part of the uh, of the eye and the last session last part I will be had, uh, talking about some of the special investigations uh, which we see that how important role they play in the optometric practice or eye care uh, services in whatever kind of setup somebody is working. Well, to start my uh, first talk, actually, whenever when I was just preparing for my talk, uh, the very first thing came to my mind that for whom I'm preparing this talk, like kiske liye main ye uh, talk bana raha hu, kiske liye mujhe present karna hai, and uh, immediately I recall uh, my first year of optometry when I was in opto I was doing my optometry, uh, and I was in first year. To be very frank, I hardly knew anything about optometry. And uh, I hope you all will be agreeing with me that if you are not knowing something, okay, like what you are targeting or what exactly you are expecting from yourself and why you are doing something, then you are not even much interested to do, the, to do, uh, do that. And similar thing was hap happened with me also when I was doing my optometry. So, I thought that why I should start such a topic for you so that you come to know because you are just the freshers, you have just entered the optometry. Uh, feel ki exactly where you are, the profession you choose kiya hai, aap ne, whether it is exactly what you were looking for or it was something else and if it is exactly what you were looking for then you need to have interest in it and interest comes with the expectations what you are expecting from yourself to be this, this professional. So this is something like I am going to uh, have uh, some slides, uh, almost 10 12 slides we are talking basically about the optometry and the field of optometry and what are the basic expectations from an optometrist despite of the setup. It could be a optical setup, it could be a hospital based setup, it could be a private clinic based setup. But what is more important is to being an optometrist you need to know what you are supposed to be doing. What are your responsibilities in eye care? Maybe you may not be following all the procedures in the practice where you are doing it because there is a different practice of optome optometry in the different setups. So, but what is more important is to know about the subject and what exactly you are expecting from yourself and does the profession which you have chosen, does really it has a growth for you, really you can achieve what you are looking for. So, that's what actually I like to start with. So, is it the optometry you have joined only because uh, you wanted to have some uh, healthcare program or you want to, to be a healthcare professional or there is some other reason for it or you know about optometry what exactly an optometry is. So, or there is something which you know very well that which makes an optometry a very interesting choice for you seeing that the optometry is a very interesting career or you know that the what kind of growth an optometry can give you is it like uh, you can grow uh, to the your expectations or still you are looking for something else or you are not sure what exactly your future is going to be with this profession and what are the other benefits that one can have being an optometrist and how do you have the personal qualities necessary to be a healthcare provider like because being an optometrist means you are going to be a healthcare provider focusing on eye. So how, uh, what are the different qualities one needs to have to ha achieve this and how to choose an optometry college because they are different colleges, they are different uh, places, they give the different kind of education, they are, even this syllabus is not very standardized, people follow their own syllabus. So all that we need to see like uh, whether the choice which we have made that's correct for me or not. Before uh, let us understand that how the optometry has come into practice. If we talk about US uh, then in from 1700 to 1900 
if you talk about the spectacles, they were not being prescribed by the, by the professionals or the specified uh, opticians or qualified opticians. They were just, can be like, anybody can walk in. Koi bhi jayega shop, kisi jewelry shop se, optical shop, uh, uh, street peddler se jaakar ke chashma khari sakta tha. But things started changing with the time. Uh, from 1986, uh, 1886 onwards, when the optometrist term was coined for the first time. And after that, the, in 1991, uh, it was for the first time when the series of vision testing lesion was published. Okay, what is the importance of it and how it is done? And then followed by 1995, the first correspondence course was offered about the uh, testing the vision or the eyesight. And which got, the, this profession of optometry got legalized in 1901. And with the passage of time, like in the 20th century, things started changing. The accreditation programs, they came and then even the refreshing and the optical dispensing uh, came into the practice uh, from 1900 to, uh, 1940. And with the time uh, of further changes uh, in, in, the, uh, in the profession, in the field, the specialty areas like contact lens, low vision, and vision therapy also came, in, came into the practice and which made this profession even much more uh, valuable and uh, responsible for the eye care. So, and the great change uh, which came uh, was when the diagnostic for pharmacological agents were allowed to be uh, practiced by optometrists in 1971 and even followed by uh, in 1976 when the therapeutic pharmacological agents were allowed uh, to be practiced by the optometrist. So this is how I know you all might be thinking that why this is so important uh, for you to ask uh, why uh, like I'm sharing with you all this. But if you see, this is what uh, optometry is basically. Optometry is responsible in healthcare delivery industry to be the primary entry point. And optometrist has the capability of not only treating but triaging or to say screening the any kind of visual or ocular problems, and then to direct the patient. Uh, to the right uh, management and to help them in uh, giving them the right solutions. And even nowadays in US, the, even the insurance payers, they even direct the patient, they ask the patient to first go to the optometrist and then to get the f for the uh, further treatments. So which is uh, really a good sign. And leading to the optometry taking on a role of, so it is what, this is what it is taking the optometry to a role of, uh, to say as a gatekeeper, and which talks about the powerful position in the eye care. And further rights to TPAs has really uh, boomed this profession and which talks about that how important it can be. As I said earlier, even the specialties development, different specialties in the field of optometry, low vision, contact lens, vision therapy, optic, uh, optomic dispensing, diagnostics, they all have uh, really changed the market of the optometry profession all over the world. And even in US, two thirds of the total eye care is taken care by the optometrist. So this is how it's being recognized all through the world. So it's a challenging career to practice and enjoy for a lifetime. So no doubt about this, the optometry has a very bright future uh, all over the world. And this is how you can, this is what you can see even some of the magazines it has been published that uh, it is the second best career choice and even the nation's third largest independent uh, healthcare profession. This was published in US. So if you see the definition according to them, there's a doctor of optometry. Uh, they are the primary healthcare providers for the eye. So they examine, diagnose, treat, and manage the diseases, injuries, and disorders of visual health, the eye and associated structures. So they are, as well as uh, help in identifying the uh, related systemic conditions by going through the examination of eye because most of the time you find, uh, we all know that the systemic uh, I, uh, eyes are the like, first where you can uh, very much find that a systemic disease get reflected. Yes, Chitragut, ask your question. अरे के लिए हम लोग फर्स्ट ईयर के स्टूडेंट हैं और हम लोग भी हिस्ट्री के बारे में कुछ ज्यादा नॉलेज नहीं है हम लोग को इसलिए सर हम चाहते हैं कि हिस्ट्री को सर एक बार और सर रिपीट किया जाए क्योंकि स्लाइड बहुत तेजी से गया है हम लोग इसको कुछ सर ये आप ही के लिए हम लोग कर रहे हैं ताकि आपको उसको पता चले ठीक है सर इनको थोड़ा सा एक्चुअली इट्स नॉट दैट इम्पोर्टेंट यू सी बट व्हाट आई जस्ट वांट टू नो हेल्प यू इसके जस्ट ब्रीफ अबाउट ऑप्टोमेट्री 
like where you can really look for because until unless you are not having a focus ki what is your target then you not be ever trying to achieve it so that was the main purpose there there's not much to go in details of it, of all those slides what i am trying to say is the further like in the my following slide which is going to come i think if you focus on that i think you will be able to understand the uh, understand the first slides as well as the purpose behind it so even if you see the uh, word council of optometrists concept of optometry then according to them the optometry is a healthcare profession that is autonomous educated and regulated and is licensed as well as registered worldwide and optometrists are the primary healthcare practitioners of eye and visual system who provide comprehensive eye and vision care which includes refraction and dispensing detection diagnosis and management of the diseases in the eye and rehabilitation of the condition of the visual system why i am giving emphasis on this is but uh, only because zara uh, tar if you see like when because i am i am practicing at shop hospital and i get regularly the student who come to me for fellowship for doing a fellowship and a very common question which i has to my all those students is ke what they know about optometry and these are the people who have done their diploma or degree in optometry and to be very frank a uh, majority of time almost 80 to 90% of time you don't get a proper answer for them to from them what exactly optometry is either they simply talk it is a reflection that we are supposed to be doing or we need to assist in the ot but if you see if you just talk about optometry it is much much beyond that of course we can't cover uh, that all in one session and uh, it is just the first year so you just need to be aware of it ki where you can where is the horizon for you where you can uh, really achieve and that all depends the efforts that you make but efforts you'll be making once you know about it ki what for you are making the efforts so there's a purpose behind it so if you see in india where we exist exactly optometry education in india are uh, it was a second five year plan uh, when for the first time the director uh, general of health services introduced the optometry and the purpose behind this was that there was a lot of unqualified practices or there were quackeries which was being practiced about the dispensing glasses and various uh, eye care practices basic primary eye for primary eye care so they thought to introduce this profession in the country and then for the first time it was talked about optometry in india it, it got introduced and from there we have been moving further like Uh, we have not seen back and the profession has been growing every day and if you see uh, now it's not only the diploma which was earlier the majority of the schools were having diploma courses only now we have the degree courses and lot of most of the places if you see the people are converting them to the degree those who are the diploma places and there's the amphil in optometry masters that's what in some of the places uh, and and the phd in optometry is also like i think available at, at one or two places now exactly i don't know where it is i think uh, uh, it's uh, in uh, pune bharti vidyapeet uh, phd is available it is only in shankar uh, at one or two places I, it is not in india actually it's not PhD in india still not india it is only in us so that's what i think that's the yeah. good thing like phd we don't have in india but that's the future of uh, we that we all at i think you the the people who have just entered the profession do you need to all look for that we will be having this uh, this also in our future i think sir they have a bright future our students have a bright yeah. future if you see Uh, they are uh, getting new job offers from the even from the companies from uh, the overseas and new uh, fields are coming exactly up. see the your value in the market comes how competent you are and your competency comes with the knowledge so that's what actually uh, we all are here to have the maximum knowledge about the field of course i think there will be many topics which you heard for the first time and it's just the beginning for you and even this session will be just talking about the basics about the topics not going for too much of details because you just in the first you need to understand about the exactly what it is and maybe in future of course you need to go for details of all that and and is to understand in more uh, informative way so these are different universities which are offering these courses uh, that optometry in india from different universities Uh, if you can see here which includes ignu and uh, most of these these courses are well recognized from hrd and ugc of india but only thing is the syllabus thing uh, is still not standardized so there is a lot of work which is being done and hoping for the best very soon it will be done once with the regulatory body and once the syllabus is standardized then the things become much easier and like you, there is a regulatory body which keeps a check on that then you're not bothered ki which student is passed out from which place because the syllabus is being followed and you get a uniform day about the students uh, there is a call from rajgiri uh, uh, rajgiri apna sawal puchhe uh, rajgiri apna sawal puchhe 
हाँ मैं सर अभिषेक बोल रहा हूँ गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून अभिषेक मेरा सवाल था सर कि क्या एक ऑप्टोमेटिस्ट डिजीज को डायग्नोज करके उसको अच्छा डायग्नोज करके मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब कर सकता है सर मेडिसिन लिख सकता है अच्छा ठीक है और मेरे एक फ्रेंड है वो भी कुछ क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे सर पूछिए गुड आफ्टरनून सर माई सेल्फ रमेश कुमार फ्रॉम राजगिरी हाँ रमेश जी बोलिए। आई वांट टू इम्फेसाइज वॉट एवर यू आर टेलिंग अस दैट इज अ वेरी गुड थिंग फॉर अस यू नो रिसेंटली देर आर द कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ ऑप्थेमोलॉजिस्ट दे हैव इशूड अ मेमोरेंडम अबाउट ऑप्टोमेट्रिक दे टोल दैट ऑप्टोमेट्रिक्स आर नॉट वेल ट्रेन इन मेडिसिन सो दे दैट कैन नॉट डिसाइड और प्रिस्क्राइब द मेडिसिन इज इट राइट और नॉट and uh, in my opinion i think if uh, they are not trained in the medicine then we should have the syllabus in which we can uh, understand all the pharmaceutical things and because you know if the uh, uh, practically if one patient is coming to me and he has uh, some disease we diagnose it we cannot uh, refer him immediately to the ophthalmologist to get the proper medicine so it will be our responsibility to give the proper medicine and treat him uh, isn't so and uh, i will also asking after some time thank you sir uh, okay. first of all actually i'll just request you all to note down your questions and if we can have all these questions in the end of this presentation because this will help us in completing the presentation in time second thing about your question actually particularly uh, if you have seen my earlier slides if you have heard them you could see that how the things have changed in the time even in the us the developed countries you are talking about and if you see in india there are many places where people when we talk about optometry they no, don't talk anything except the refraction forget about the syllabus of optometry which is covered so till the syllabus and all these things are not standardized till the similar education is not being given at all the places it is really really almost impossible but a lot of work is being done let us hope for the best and i think very soon you will be getting some results but what we need to do from our side is if you want to call yourself as an optometrist let us learn what an optometrist being a op professional of optometry what we are supposed to be competent in what the skills we should be having because if you not skilled you not valued ek bar aap skills apni develop kariye aapko time ke sath lagega ki ha people are asking you for it agar aapke acha presentation nahi hai aapko koi presentation dene ke liye nahi bulayega agar aap class mein bhi aap dekhte hain agar aap acche uh, like anchor nahi hai ya aap acche uh, initiator nahi hai aapko monitor nahi banaya jayega class mein So the same thing. This is things which comes spontaneously. But first, you need to project yourself in the market, exactly what you are and what the market is expecting from you. And automatically, the people start getting the positions. Uh, sir, you know, they asked about medicine. Was it true that these people say medicine? No, no, no. It's not at all allowed. And I think we should take care for it till it's not allowed. But yes, we need to be keep focusing that, like in US, the people are practicing. We also need to have that. So. for that what is to be done what exactly your faculties can help you take they take their help and there are a lot of uh, even political issues as well as the like uh, the uh, organizations which are working in this area they are working on it and let us we can't say anything about this in this conference in this uh, teleconference ki what exactly you can do what we can't we are not here for this purpose but we are our purpose is simply to make you understand what you can target what you need to target for you to be called a competent optometrist okay hope okay. this answers your question okay sir so apart from doing the refractions with the different techniques uh, at the different age groups doing dry refraction cycloplastics even auto uh, objective refraction subjective uh, auto refractions uh, what we need to do that very diagnostic procedures we need to competent in like it could be ffa appendicular tonometry include slit lamp examination a scan of course slit lamp examination different instrument handling keratometer pachymetry topography and visual field analyzers so this is what optometry comes and these are the specialties like which includes contact lens optical dispensing low vision and the rehabilitation services where optometrists play a major role nowadays if you see all the rehabilitation majority of the rehabilitation centers where were the people are working for the low vision patients and uh, this is how you help the patients and this is how the, you are helping these uh, patients in becoming independent and uh valuable and productive for your community and even about the vision therapy which is uh, a little new in india but very well being practiced outside so this is how uh, you can like this is the area of optometrists which even the places where where it has been it has started in india people are doing much better and finding much better like 
we really are able to help the patients in giving them the binocular vision. So, it's optometrist responsibility is not only to do the specific tests, it is to assume responsibility for all aspects of eye care and vision care for all patients presenting into the clinic. So, let's come back to the main topic of today. So, these are the various clinical procedures in optometry, uh, which one should be knowing? Vergence, ductions, heterophorias like binoculars, bin uh, bin binocular vision, then color vision, of course, the lensometry, refraction, which could be objective, subjective, auto refraction, near refraction, keratometry, slit lamp photography, and tonometry, gonioscopy to see the angle chambers, angle status, then field charting, drugs and eyes, you need to have a knowledge about uh, most of the, all, all of, uh, I think most of the diagnostic drugs and even therapeutic drugs because in history and all you need to mention about some of the drugs really plays a very important role because we need to know what the patient is already using and uh, what kind of side effects it can cause to the patient's eye. Appellation, ocular foreign body removal, clear, so this is what all we need to know about, uh, know about being an optometrist. And it doesn't complete the optometry. There are some of the major areas which I, uh, I, I, I mentioned here. And even in my today's presentation, I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'll be taking only some of the anti segment ones, post segment uh, today I'm not going to cover in this. We'll have some other session for that. So let's come back to for the first uh, uh, investigation that is history taking. So history taking really plays a very important role, not only uh, in diagnosing the things, uh, but even helping you uh, in knowing exactly uh, what are the diagnostic tests which needs to be done for that particular patient. And this is how you help, you confirm your diagnosis and then plan a management accordingly. So this is how you play a very major role in this with the, by uh, documenting a proper history. And then you need to know about the allergies and any under undesirable side effects because of any drug because sometimes allergy to any particular drug could be even health hazardous. Uh, so we need to mention about the drugs if patient is taking any drug and then similarly the deciding about the diagnostic tests required like it helps in knowing as any particular test if it is required and family predispositions uh, uh, like there are some of the diseases which are uh, hereditary like refractive error it could be ptosis any misalignment of the eyes like squint uh, it could be like uh, any corneal dystrophies even keratoconus so some of the diseases these are very like hereditary so there are possibilities to pass into the next generation so we need to uh, document it so that we can exactly come to know the cause from the from where it has come. So if you see like in history what are the specific questions we need to uh, generally ask to the uh, patient or the attendant. If you talk about general history it's the systemic history which plays a very important role. Okay, uh, how like patient ko koi systemic problem to nahi hai whether blood pressure, sugar, arthritis, any cardiac problem. Uh, any other problem like it which needs uh, which could have which could ha can have a relation with the I. So that needs to be documented into the file. Similarly, treatment of the uh, any treatment if the patient is taking uh, for that particular disease, or the patient is um, talking to, or any particular medication, the long-term medication, uh, there could be some asteroids or any particular medication which patient is having for long, and that could show side effects into the eyes. So all that we need to document, and even the personal and the professional history, that is a vocational history. Okay, what is the mainly the patient's uh, job, the the working? Uh, what kind of work a patient is doing because according to him the visual needs will be different for a different person uh, according to his uh, visual requirement uh, according to his professional needs so we need to document that if somebody is a computer user so you are going to take care for that when you are prescribing your glasses that or whenever you are uh, going uh, like any kind of symptoms that patient is having computer vision syndrome or something like that so that, that means that is related to that so that helps in making you toward, directing you towards the correct diagnosis then family history as I said earlier and history of al il uh, allergies then ocular histories of course that is the main chief complaint you need to ask to the patient ki kya problem hai usko jiske saath mein wo aapke paas aaya hai aapko dikhane ke liye aaya hua hai aur we should always try ki jo patient ki apni jo language hai jis cheez mein wo bata raha hai we should try to document that in that way only and then uh, history of present illness like for how long he has been having this problem so how the disease has progressed this is how you come to know about it and any treatment if the patient has had uh, about the same uh, disease so that's what we all we need to document to do that so this plays a very important role in helping uh, directing us to make a proper or a confirmed uh, diagnosis then for the visual equity so as we know, I think you all have heard, uh, all have read about that. That power—it is the power to distinguish one object from the other and to appreciate the details of the 
object. This is how the uh, visual equity helps us knowing like how small things are for what distance one can differentiate the one object from the other. This is the like simple thing about it. And uh, so it's the ability to find out the minimum angle at which two points are seen as separate points. And if you see here, uh, like one, the alphabet E is there, uh, which is making an angle. And this angle can be increased or decreased according to the either the size of the letter. If it is the size is smaller, angle will be smaller. Or if the size is bigger than this, simply angle will be bigger. Or even if the distance of the letter is changed, if it comes closer, your angle will increase. And if it goes further, angle will decrease. So there are several tests for testing the visual equity which are available. और लेकिन ये तो है कि जितने भी टेस्ट होते हैं आप सारे टेस्ट तो अपनी क्लिनिक में नहीं रख सकते हैं अपने सेटअप में नहीं रख सकते उसमें से कुछ टेस्ट आपको चूज करने पड़ते हैं और वो टेस्ट आप फॉलो करते हैं पेशेंट की एबिलिटी के हिसाब से और डेवलपमेंटल एज क्या है लाइक पेशेंट की एज क्या है कितना कॉपरेशन है एंड अकॉर्डिंगली यू डिसाइड अबाउट कि कौन सा टेस्ट आपको उस पेशेंट को कराना है सो दैट यू कैन गेट अ रिलायबल फाइंडिंग सो यू हैव थ्री फोर टेस्ट विद यू and if you see the discrimination equity there are different uh, kind of different uh, ways to uh, assess the visual equity one is discrimination visual uh, uh, visual equity uh, equity test and they is they are said to be more specific because they involves letters and the symbols but you can't perform in all the tests where the verbal response is not possible so you need to rely on the test like preferential looking procedures uh, where you need to uh, show two targets to a child uh, to a patient and uh, one is having some gratings or the there's some stimulus on it and other is plain so it's the like a natural thing if somebody is being shown an attractive target and other is plain so a child will be or a patient will be attracted towards the attractive target or stimulus so this is how you come to know whether and you keep uh, decreasing the size of that uh, stimulus a uh, grating of this stimulus so until the you are able to get the response then you, you come to know about the uh, status of the visual equity and then comes the uh, physiological uh, oriented test where you need to move some target and which called optokinetic uh, nystagmus mass test or the vp uh, test and you're moving some target in front of the patient's eye and till the patient is able to follow it the strips or uh, the gratings on that it means uh, that uh, that much visual equity the patient is able to have so if we talk about the pre verbal children like those who can't speak jo bacche bol nahi sakte agar unme ya koi aur aisa patient hai jo bol nahi sakta hai तो उसमें हम विजन कैसे ले सकते हैं लाइक like, अगर एक महीने का बच्चा है तो आप कैसे करेंगे आप स्नेडर चार्ज है जो स्नेडर चार्ज स्टैंडर्ड चार्ज है उससे तो नहीं करेंगे तो आपको उसको आपने नॉर्मली आप देखेंगे वो फेस कैसे फॉलो कर रहा है या फेस को कैसे देख रहा है मे बी अटेंडेंट का फेस मदर का फेस या इवन आपका फेस तो उससे आपको आइडिया लग जाएगा कि वर्डिंग मूवमेंट तो नहीं है तो फिक्सेशन किस तरह की है उसकी उससे आपको काफी आइडिया लग जाएगा पेशेंट की विजन कैसी है अगर जैसे एक साल का बच्चा है इट्स अ वन ईयर देन यू कैन टेक द हेल्प ऑफ इवन टारगेट्स अट्रैक्टिव टारगेट्स कोई पपेट और अ डॉल उसमें कुछ डिटेल्स हो सकते हैं आप उसके डिटेल्स को दिखाने की कोशिश करेंगे या लाइट सोर्सेस कहीं से आ रही होगी सो दिस काइंड ऑफ हेल्प यू कैन टेक एंड दैट विल हेल्प यू गिविंग इवन मोर रिफाइंड वे सो दे यू नीट लुक फॉर फिक्सेशन वट कैन ऑफ फिक्सेशन पेशेंट इज हैविंग सेंट्रल या आंख के बिल्कुल सेंटर बीच से वो उसको प्रॉपरली सेंट्रली फिक्सेट कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा है और उसको जो फिक्सेट कर रहा है उसको मेंटेन कर पाता है नहीं कर पाता कितनी देर तक उसे देख पाता है ऐसा नहीं कि देखता है एंड हट जाता है वेदर बिकॉज अगर किसी बच्चे की नजर बहुत अच्छी नहीं है तो उसको ज्यादा देर तक वो मेंटेन नहीं कर पाएगा सो दिस इज हाउ यू कम टू नो एक्जेक्टली उसका विजुअल स्टेटस क्या है और दे कुड बी प्री वोबल चाइल्ड लाइक यू कैन इवन लुक फॉर प्यूपलरी रिस्पॉन्स पीपलरी रेस्पॉन्स का पीपल कैसा है क्योंकि पीपल से आपको बहुत सारी चीजें पता चल जाती है पीपल किस तरह से रिएक्ट कर रहा है कोई और पैथोलॉजी तो नहीं है पोस्टर सेगमेंट में कोई पैथोलॉजी तो नहीं है रेटना वगैरह सब कुछ ठीक है नहीं चाहिए यू कम टू नो अबाउट फ्रॉम दैट ऑल्सो एंड ऑफकोर्स द रोटेशन ऑफ अ चाइल्ड यू कैन होल्ड द चाइल्ड इन योर हैंड एंड देन यू जस्ट स्टार्ट रोटेटिंग द चाइल्ड एंड लेट द चाइल्ड फिक्स इटिंग ऑन योर फेस यू कैन मेक सम साउंड और सम डिफरेंट फेसेस सो स्टिल द चाइल्ड इज एबल टू फॉलो योर फेस दैट मीन्स पेशेंट इज दैट पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट इज एबल टू फॉलो यू और द Changes which are making on a face, so it means he has got that much of visual equity at least. Then you need to compare the red reflexes, whether reflexes are similar in both the eyes or not. Uh, because if there is a difference in the uh, re uh, reflexes, it could be like an isometropia. There could be difference in refractive errors. One eye could be amblyopic. So that you come to know whether both eyes having symmetrical reflexes or not. And then physiological oriented tests like Taylor equity test, you can take the help. Cat foot drum like. Uh, nystagmus, uh, optokinetic nystagmus, and then the refraction technique. You need to know about the refractive status. What is the refractive status of a child? And of course, the fundus examination whether everything is fine in the posterior segment or not. Then verbal responses like where 
जहां आप चाइल्ड की बच्चा बोल सकता है देन यू कैन टेक द हेल्प ऑफ अदर पिक्चर्स मे बी इज नॉट एबल टू रीड बट ही कैन आइडेंटिफाई सम अदर पिक्चर्स पिक्चर्स बता सकता है कि एरोप्लेन है या हट है या एप्पल है देन यू कैन टेक द हेल्प ऑफ पिक्चर्स लाइक के पिक्चर्स ई चार्ट एंड एल एन चार्ट बट इफ अ पेशेंट कैन रीड देन द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इज कंसिडर्ड इज द इलेवन चार्ट विच एज वी ऑल नो इट इज डिजाइन टू बी रीड फ्रॉम अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ सिक्स मीटर इज अ प्रिफर डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम वेयर वन पेशेंट इज आस्ट टू रीड एंड देर द डिफरेंट लेटर्स ऑन इट Uh, which are designed for specific distances like top letter for 60 meter then for 36 meter 24 meter that means like if somebody is seeing the top letter from 60 meter matlab if somebody is having normal vision he should be able to read that from 60 meter the top letter but it's not possible for each and every patient to go and ask from 60 meter so the test is designed from 6 meter only but the letter size is, has been changed so if somebody is able to tell only like second line letter which is 36 letter so you document his vision 6 by 36 because a letter which is designed to be read from 36 meter that particular patient is reading only from 6 meter so it's his visual acuity will be 6 by 36 because he, can, he can't tell you beyond that but if somebody is able to read 6 6 that means a letter which is designed to be read from 6 meter and wo usko 6 meter se hi pad pa raha hai so that means iska visual acuity normal hai so that's how you come to know about it and uh, it's not only the english alphabets you can uh, take the help of even the e charts for illiterate patient like who, who can't read it then you can take the help of e charts or c charts even the regional language charts are also available so according to the comfort level of the patient uh, you can uh, take the help of different charts balino vecri charts is uh, like you can see is more or less similar to the snell and chart but there is difference in this the arrangement of the letters if you see uh in the first chart this nilan chart if you see they were the letters number of letters has increased in each row and if you see there's lot of crowding the letters so congested in the like down uh, if you see uh, like the rows beyond 4 5 5th and 6th but if you see in the other chart value well, chart there is almost uniform spacing and there is fixed number of letters in all the rows so that is considered to be more standardized uh, method for uh, uh, estimating the visual acuity if it is available with the people So this is how we record the visual acuity for nose of normal as I said 66. If it is less than that 66, 612, 618, 16, or if it is not 6 by 60, 60 is less than that. Then we can reduce the distance to 5 by 60, 4 by 60, to 1 by 60. And even if somebody is not having 1 by 60, then you can take the help of counting fingers. So like from what distance you can read the counting fingers, or hand movement is the or there or not. So that keeps going like how worse the patient's visual acuity is. And then we need to look for the perception uh, of light that whether the patient can perceive the light or not is present or absent if it is uh, perception is there then for even for uh, projection whether he can appreciate the light from all the corners or not from different quadrants or not and it should be done with then without correction if somebody is putting on a correction it should be done without correction uh, with correction as well as with the pinhole which lets you know about the maximum potential how much the vision can improve if it is affect uh, getting affected because of refractive error so they could be other tests like hot uh, hotv test broken ring lee symbols uh, lee symbol is normally used for the like mentally challenged uh, challenged challenge, uh, patients who can really tell you the specify the pictures you just need to point out some uh, shape and they need to point out on the guide that they have with them then cardiac acuity test and the near visual acuity test is done in a similar way like hmm? okay students uh, now uh, we are concluding this session and after the break mr prem is going to continue with this uh, lecture thank you